Do you know the difference between app router, page router, static site generation, static rendering, server site rendering, dynamic rendering, incremental static regeneration, server components, client components, get static props, get server site props, get static paths, generate static params, and hydration? With Next.js 13, a lot has changed and just too much to keep track of and confusing to know what's really happening. But today we try to clear up the confusion once and for all. Let's get rid of that and start with the basics. A web app can be rendered in two ways, on the client or on the server. The client is a browser on a user's device that sends a request to a server. It then takes a response from a server and turns it into an interface that the user can interact with. The server refers to the computer in the data center that stores your code, receives requests from a client, makes some computations, and sends back an appropriate response. Before React 18, web apps were primarily rendered on the client. Next.js introduced an easier way to break applications into pages and render them on the server as well. Now, it's important to note when I say Next.js 12, I specifically mean the pages router, not the app router, which is Next.js 13 specific. When you create a new app, Next.js will ask you if you want to use the app router. If you select no, you use the pages router instead. If you select yes, then you use the app router, which is recommended. The good news is that in both Next 12 and Next 13, most of your application is pre-rendered on the server. This means that the HTML for each page is generated in advance, rather than being done by client-side JavaScript. You can see this when you run the build command. Both build commands show that Next.js pre-renders each page by default. However, the way Next handles rendering has changed since Next.js 13. Next 12 has two forms of pre-rendering, static generation and server-side rendering. When the page is loaded by the browser, its JavaScript code is executed, making the page fully interactive. This process is called hydration in React. The difference is in how the HTML for a page is generated. Let's start with static generation. The HTML is generated at build time and is cached and reused on every request. Here's an example of a page that uses static generation. Static site generation is the default. You can also have a statically generated page with data using get static props. Get select props is called at build time on the server and the page component gets the data as props. The second form of pre-rendering is server-side rendering. The HTML is generated at request time. Here's an example of a page that uses server-side rendering. To use server-side rendering, you need to export a function called getServerSideProps. This function will be called by Next.js every time the page is requested. Now, there's also a third way to render a page, when you want to update the page after it has been built. This is called incremental static regeneration, or short ISR. With that, you don't have to rebuild the entire app to update a page. To use ISR, simply add the revalidate prop to get static props and set it to the number of seconds after which a page should be regenerated. With revalidate, Next.js will attempt to regenerate the page at least once every 10 seconds. Subsequent requests will serve the cache HTML until the 10 seconds are up. This shouldn't be new to you, as this is how Next.js used to work. However, things have changed in Next 13, and I think it has become much simpler. So instead of using get side props and get server side props, Next 13 renders the page based on certain conditions. Rendering in Next.js 13 is very similar to Next.js 12. We still have static site generation and server site rendering. However, Next changed the naming. Instead of static site generation, we now have static rendering. It's the default way of rendering. And instead of server site rendering, we now have dynamic rendering. Static rendering is done at build time, and the result is also cached and reused on subsequent requests. Dynamic rendering happens at request time, and the result is not cached. But here's the difference. In Next 12, to use server-side rendering, we had to use get server-side props. In Next 13, though, we don't need to do that anymore. Next.js automatically detects when a route requires dynamic rendering. If Next.js detects uncached data or a dynamic function, Next will automatically switch to dynamic rendering. 
Dynamic functions are functions that require information that is only known at request time, for example, cookies, headers, or URL search params. In fact, these are all the dynamic functions. All right, so far the rendering is not that different, but next routine also introduced server components, and this may be confusing to some. Are server components the same as server-side rendering? No, they are not. And this is probably why Next.js decided to rename server-side rendering to dynamic rendering to avoid confusion. This is what a server component can look like. It looks like a regular React component because in Next 13, all components are server components by default. With server components, the HTML is pre-rendered on the server and then sent to the client. However, server components are not hydrated on the client. This means that they are not inactive. You can use state or React hooks with server components. Server components were introduced in React 18, and Next.js 13 has officially adopted them. I have a video link in the description that goes into detail about server components. Server components are great for static content and for keeping large dependencies or sensitive data away from the client. But if you need interactivity, you should use client components. To use client components, just add the use client directive at the top of the file before any import statements. Here's an example. It's important to understand that client components are also pre-rendered on the server, but they're hydrated on the client. So they only fully render on the client. That's how they can use listeners, hooks, and other things. Next.js recommends that you use server components and only client components when needed, as server components are better for performance. So what's the difference between server components and server-side rendering? Dynamic rendering, or server-side rendering, is the process of rendering an entire web page on the server a web page can consist of several components. On the other hand, a server component doesn't work the same way. It doesn't dynamically run an entire web page. Instead, it takes a single individual component and pre-renders it on the server during the build process. When the user visits a page, the pre-rendered HTML is then sent to the client. Server-side rendering and server components work together, not against each other. In fact, you can have server-side rendering and server components at the same time. Here's our very simple server component from earlier. To trigger dynamic rendering, we need to fetch data. Because remember, Next would switch to dynamic rendering when it detects uncached data or a dynamic function in the page. When we fetch data and call it from within the component, Next would switch to dynamic rendering because it detects uncached data. That's how you can use dynamic rendering for server components. This is also a perfect segue into the next topic. In Next.js 12, the way we determine rendering is by using either get site props or get server side props. But in Next.js 13, get site props and get server side props don't exist anymore. Instead, Next 13 uses the native fetch API to fetch data. This is a huge change as Next now combines everything into one API. And I think it actually makes it more intuitive and easier. Let's go through these methods one at a time. Let's look at get static props first. Here's a simple example of how we would use get the prop in Next.js 12. In this example, we fetch a list of users from an API and then render the data on the page. We use get static props to fetch the data at build time. We then pass the data as props to the page component and map through the users. In Next 13, we can replace get static props with the fetch web API. First, we move the get setup props function. Then we create a new async function called get data. Inside get data, we make a fetch request to the API. We add the cache force cache option to force the browser to catch response. We then return response as JSON. Then we move the prop inside the page component since we can call get data directly and don't need to pass props anymore. The first cache option is on by default, so we can actually remove it. So by simply using the native fetch API with the default options, we can replace get setup props in Next 13. Now let's look at how we would code get server side props. Here's the example from earlier. It's similar to get setup props, except we use get server side props, and next we fetch the data at request time instead of build time. To use the native fetch API in Next 13, remove get server side props and create the same new async function called get data. The only difference here is that this time we need to add cache no store. This tells Next not to cache the data and to fetch it on each request. We will then return the response as JSON. We also remove the prop inside the page component and call get data directly. 
With that, we have replaced get set props and get server side props with the native fetch API. How would we do incremental site regeneration in X13? Let's take a look at that next. Let's go back at our previous get static props example. To make it incremental, we can add revalidate to the get setup props function. This tells Next to revalidate the data every 10 seconds. To make this work in Next 13, we could simply add Next revalidate 10 to the fetch function. Let's modify our get data function in our Next 12 get static props example. We add the Next revalidate option to the fetch function. This tests Next also to revalidate the data every 10 seconds. And that's how easy it is to fetch data in Next 13. Instead of using different methods, we can just use one API. This makes everything so much easier, and Next.js takes care of the proper rendering in the background. Okay, that's great. But you might ask, what will GetSetic pass for dynamic routes? Next 13 has that covered as well. GetSetic pass is now called Generate Static Params. Here's the simple example using GetSetic pass. First, we fetch a list of posts. Then we create the pass array by mapping over the post. Then we return the pass to pass it to the getSet props function. Remember, getSet pass must be used with getSet props, and getSet pass runs during build time. This shouldn't be new to you. Now let's change it for next 13. First, remove all the functions. Then create the generate static params function. Generate static params is like getSet pass, but simpler. It returns an array of objects, where each object represents the dynamic parameters of a specific route, like the ID of a post. This is simpler than returning nested params objects. We can capture the return objects in the params prop of the page component, and then we can use the params prop to fetch the post. We can optimize the code by moving the fetch call to a separate function, create a new get post function, and move the fetch call to it then just call get post in the page component. And that's how we would create dynamic routes in Next 13. I think once you get used to it, it's a lot easier than the old way. Okay, that was a lot to take in. So here's a quick recap of the changes. Static site generation is now called static rendering. Both are the default. Server site rendering is now called dynamic rendering. With server components, we can now pre-render individual components on the server. Server components and server-side rendering, or dynamic rendering, are not the same. Server components are pre-rendered once on the server at build time. Dynamic rendering renders an entire route on the server at request time, not just a single component. Instead of get set props, use the default fetch function. And instead of get server-side props, use the cache no store option. If you want incremental static regeneration, use the next revalidate option. Next.js has changed the whole game, but once you get your head around it, it's much easier than the old way. I find the new approach more intuitive. And that brings us to the end. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. Check out my other Next.js videos on my channel, and I'll see you in the next one.